Hi, third grade. Today we are going to draw crayfish, just like you are either already learning about in class or will be learning about sometime this year. Now, if you are doing this in your classroom or just for fun, your crayfish is going to turn out like this. Um, if you're doing this in art class, then we are going to actually cut this crayfish out and add him to your background you've been working on with watercolors and oil pastels. But let's go ahead and get started. All right, here is my reference picture. This crayfish is orange, which is unlike the ones that you are going to be looking at, but that's okay because all of the shapes are the same. The first thing we're drawing is the carapace or the body, the hard shell on the outside of the body. I am drawing the shape at a little bit of an angle and the shape you want to draw is a rectangle with rounded corners. So it kind of looks like a flattened oval, but you want to think of it more like the shape of a rectangle with those corners nice and rounded. You can even draw a rectangle first and then round out the corners if that's easier for you. Make sure you're putting it right in the middle of your paper. When we look at the head, we see that it's really the shape of a triangle. So we're going to start at that bottom edge of the body do a little bit of a curve and then curve it back in to make that triangle shape. Notice the head has curvy lines, not straight ones, which is why we're doing those curves, but it's still a triangle. And then we can put that big eye right there in the middle. When we go to the tail, it's jointed or segmented, but we're going to draw it as one big shape first, starting with the bottom line as a long curve. Then we're going to go to the top and do a long curve that connects to our first line making the tail. Then we can add in those joints or segments for how the crayfish can bend its body. It needs those joints because the outside is a hard shell. Now when I go to his actual tail, I'm looking at that oval shape, but I'm changing the direction a little bit from the reference since he's sitting on it and I want it to go out a little more. And I'm adding another curve behind it because the tail is in two curves and one is farther away from us than the other. Now when I go to the pinchers, I want to start with where they connect to the body, which is a long skinny triangle. So put in a long skinny triangle and then you can do your pinchers as a curve, a bump like a V, and a curve back into that triangle. You can have your pinchers pointing whatever direction you want, uh, but with the back one you'll see again, you have to start with that long triangle connecting to the body, curve, V, and then curve back into that triangle for the other pincher. So mine kind of looks like he's waving high. When we look at the legs, we want to make sure we put in enough legs. Crayfish have eight legs. So we see four on one side and we're going to start with those four. For the legs, I'm also looking at it as two sections like the pincher. So I'm drawing a line out and a line down and then I'm thickening that line. I'm putting a line along the side of it to make it a shape instead of just a line. I want my legs to be a shape. So I'm drawing out, down, and then connecting back in to make our legs a shape. Out and down. And for the last one, I am copying my reference and doing a little more of a curve. But make sure you're doing each of the legs as a shape. Now, you don't see this in the reference image, but one of the really important features crayfish have is swimmerettes underneath their jointed tail. So I'm just going to do some little bumps to show the swimmerettes because I don't want to miss that really important part of the crayfish. Now you'll notice we're missing the antennas, which is how crayfish smell, so that's really important. I'm going to start with a couple of big long antennas and I'm doing those just like the legs, uh, but with one smooth line and then connecting back in to make it a shape. 
and then I'm going to let my smaller antennas be just lines instead of shapes and make sure I add some of those in uh, so my crayfish can smell its food really easily. I'm going to go back through darken some of my lines and clean it up and then I am going to go in and add a little bit of shading. So to shade you want to use the side of your pencil and you're thinking about uh, shading in the dark eye of course but also where is the bottom of the crayfish. The bottom of the crayfish is where shadows would be and anything that's far away from us. So the back part of the tail that's farther away uh, the pincher that's farther away from us since we're looking from the side. Half of the crayfish is behind the body so that we can shade in to make it look further away from us. And I only had my four legs on the side closest to me but I'm going to put in uh, the other four legs of the crayfish. I'm going to give him eight legs but I'm going to make those legs nice and shaded so that I can tell they are further away. I can tell there's not eight legs on one side of the crayfish. There's four legs on one side of the crayfish and four legs on the other. So the legs that are on the other side, I'm shading in dark so that they look like they are further away from me as the viewer or the artist. And now we have eight legs. I'm going to put a little shading on my swimmerettes too since they're underneath the tail. Now, if you're in art class, you're going to stop right here um, and wait for the next step. But if you're drawing this for fun, you can start adding in the creek environment around your crayfish. So I'm looking at little pebbles. I am looking at swirly lines for the water, little bubbles for the water. Um, maybe seaweed. There's uh, fake seaweed in the crayfish tank we have here at school. So I could put in a little bit of that and then the little pebbles or stones that would be at the bottom of the creek for the crayfish. <laughs> 